Welcome to our review on the carboxylic acids. So just as we've seen with other organic compounds, then we do have some key things we need to understand about the carboxylic acids. First thing is the functional group, which is C O H. So whenever they ask you to write down the functional group for the carboxylic acids, C O O H is what you need to put down. And that is known as the carboxyl group. Now, when we're talking about the carboxylic acids, then all of their names end in anoic acid. So if we had one carbon, it would be methanoic acid, two carbons, ethanoic acid, etc. They've also got that general formula that we've been learning for the other organic compounds. This one is CnH2n plus 1 COOH. Now, the key thing to remember about this is when you're actually writing down the formulae that one of the carbons is in the functional group. So in the COOH, there's one carbon there. So go careful not to add an extra carbon when you're writing either the normal formula or the displayed formula down. So if we're looking at pentanoic acid as an example, we know it's got five carbons because it's pent, but only four of them go into the actual carbon part at the start. So it's C4H9, and then the functional group at the end has the other carbon in it, the COOH. So just be mindful of that. In terms of how we draw our carboxylic acids in the form of a displayed formula, I've given you methanoic and ethanoic acid on the right there. When you're actually writing the functional group, then from the carbon, there's one oxygen joined with a double bond and another oxygen joined with a single bond. So just be mindful not to miss that double bond. Otherwise, you're going to have the wrong number of hydrogens in your final formula. In terms of how our carboxylic acids are formed, when we take an alcohol and react it with an oxidizing agent, it forms the carboxylic acid. So if we take ethanol and we react it with an oxidizing agent like potassium manganate 7, we will make ethanoic acid. And the way that we can do this is by taking our ethanol, our oxidizing agent, and we mix it with some dilute sulfuric acid. We need to gently warm that first of all, and then what we see is a color change. So manganate seven ions are actually a purple in color, as you can see on the left there. And what happens in this reaction is they're going to be reduced to the manganese two ions, which are pink. So what we find is we got that visual representation of the reaction due to the changes in our manganate ions. But at the same time, the bit we can't see is the oxidation of our ethanol to the ethanoic acid. In terms of the reactions of our carboxylic acids, the key thing to remember is they are weak acids. So the reactions that we will see are just the same as those when we react an acid with different chemicals. So if we react our carboxylic acid with a metal, we will produce a salt and hydrogen. If we react our carboxylic acid with an alkali or a base, we produce the salt and water. If we react the carboxylic acid with a carbonate, we produce salt, water and carbon dioxide. So make sure you remember those three different reactions and what they form, because you could well be asked to construct either a word equation or a balanced symbol equation for one of these reactions. And if you don't know what they form, you will get no marks on that. When it comes to writing the name of the salt formed from one of our carboxylic acids, they have a slightly different ending. So the salts all have the ending O8, so O-A-T-E. So to give you an example of a reaction, we could have ethanoic acid reacting with sodium carbonate. So we know it's going to make a salt, water and carbon dioxide. And when we come to write the name of the salt, first of all, take the name of our metal, which is sodium. Then we look at our acid and it's going to be ethanoate because it's the ethanoic acid and the ending is always O-A-T-E plus water plus carbon dioxide. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can name the first four straight chain carboxylic acids and draw their displayed formulae. You can explain why carboxylic acids form a homologous series, and you can describe how carboxylic acids are made from alcohols. You should also be able to describe how the carboxylic acids react with metals, alkalis and bases, 
and carbonates, including what they form.